Hey everyone, this is Ian here from Headphone Zone. So even after serving the Indian audiophile community for the last 12 years, we find ourselves overwhelmed by the number of newcomers to this hobby. After speaking to a number of you guys out there, it's become quite clear to me that for a lot of you, picking your first IEM or headphone isn't as much of a task as picking your first DAC to go with the rest of your gear. Why? Well, there's the age-old question of what's a DAC in the first place? And if I do end up getting one, how do I know it's suitable for my headphones or IEMs? And not to mention the endless online discussions which ultimately take you to nowhere. So if you're struggling with any of these questions, then you should definitely keep watching. Alright, so let's try and understand what a DAC is and why do you need one. See, for a lot of us out there, we listen to music on our smartphones and laptops. Now this may be music you have downloaded or you're just streaming off apps like Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal. It doesn't really matter. As long as it's in your phone, it's stored digitally. We as humans can interpret and understand analog data, right? So you can already see where I'm getting at. A DAC simply stands for Digital to Analog Converter. Its only job is to take a digital signal, deconstruct it, deconstruct it back into an analog form and then pass it on to your headphones or speakers, which we then listen to as audio and enjoy as music. It's pretty simple, right? You can find a DAC typically located somewhere around the 3.5 mm jack on your source device. Now, this might raise an obvious question. If I already have an inbuilt DAC, why do I need an external one? Well, you see, most manufacturers out there, when putting a lot of R&D into their products, a lot of the budget is reserved into things like the processors, screen, battery, camera, and a whole lot of things where audio pretty much sits at the last. In fact, it's so little of importance nowadays to these manufacturers that you simply don't see the headphone jack on any of your smartphones. In fact, if you're using one, if you're using a smartphone right now and you have a headphone jack on it, do comment down below, I'm very curious to know. Having said that, even if you have a DAC, it's pretty substandard and switching to an external DAC can make a huge difference to the way you listen to music. If you're having a hard time visualizing this, imagine this, you're watching your favorite movie on a standard definition television and now you move to an 8K ultra high resolution television. Now imagine that difference, but in audio. All right, so now that we understood the importance of a DAC, Let's actually start discussing some options. Today, we'll mainly be talking about desktop DACs for your beginner headphones. But don't worry, in case you're looking out for DACs for your IEMs, check out this video we made. It's an extensive video covering the best portable DACs in the market right now. All right, so let's kick things off with the iFi Audio Uno. For those of you who have not heard about iFi, they're a UK-based audio company. I've been doing this for the better part of 12 years and have a wide range of products from 5,000 all the way till 3 lakhs. So I think it's pretty safe to say that these guys know what they're doing. All of the products that we will be talking about today are from iFi Audio itself because I think they have a wide range of products, especially if you're getting started into desktop DACs and beginner headphones. All right, so coming to the iFi Audio Uno. Now this is iFi Audio's latest entry into the desktop line and it's mainly aimed for all of you beginners out there. Now, I like the overall compact form factor of this. I think it looks very nice on a desk, doesn't take too much space, and it's made from an all plastic build and it's really light. However, you have these rubber feet at the bottom, which are quite grippy and it's gonna ensure that your DAC is not slipping once you have it connected in a setup. So at the back over here, you get to see this USB Type-C input, which will be connected to a laptop or a desktop. And you have a pair of RC inputs just besides that, which you can use to probably connect a pair of active speakers you may have sitting on your desk. On the front, you get a couple of options over here. Now you have the equalizer button, which takes you through three different modes. So you have a gaming mode, a movie mode, and a music mode. Uh, for most music listening, I kind of liked it uh, without any equalizer. I think the sound, it, it sounded very clean to me, but if you, if you turn on the gaming mode, what it does is add a little bit of sparkle to your treble. So that way it makes the music seem a little bit more detailed and the audio just comes through a little bit nicer. I kind of like to turn on the movie mode when I was probably watching some podcast or just having more vocal in in intrinsic things because the mid range gets a little, little bit of a boost and the music mode kind of gives you a little bit of a shift in the bass. So those of you who enjoy that flavor profile can listen to that. Now it's important to know that all of these equalizer options are happening at the analog stage of the DAC, which I found pretty impressive, especially for an entry level DAC like this. Just besides that, you have the power match button. Now what it does is just gives you a little bit of a boost. So if you're using IEMs along with the iFi Uno, you can have that turned off, but for most 
beginner headphones, I would kind of put that on along with the volume knob over here. I think it gives a little bit of boost in your overall listening experience and kind of sounds better that way. Then you have iFi Audio Signature S-Balanced 3.5 mm jack. Now what this does is kind of gives you a little bit of less crosstalk and that's something you get to see with fully balanced terminations like a 4.4 Pentacon connector or an XLR connector. So even without being truly balanced, it gives you a little bit of that advantage. And again, it's iFi Audio's proprietary tech in their cheapest desktop tech. Now inside you have an ESS Sabre chip iFi really doesn't get into the details of which DAC is in this, but it's going to handle any of the high-res files you throw at it. And speaking about power outputs, I think there's quite a lot on this, around 200 milliwatts, and good enough to power pretty much any entry-level headphone you want to throw at it. I personally used it with the Kratos, and I think it sounded fine. I was just at around 12 to 1 o'clock on the volume knob and had plenty of power. So yeah, it's pretty good if you're looking out for an entry-level desktop DAC. All right, next up we have the iFi Audio Zen Air DAC. Now, now we're getting into proper desktop size DACs and what that means is more space and you're gonna have more power and place for iFi Audio's well-renowned Per Brown chip. So you get to see this full polymer construction, which I would say feels quite nice. In fact, although the weight is a little bit light, it doesn't feel cheap. Everything you touch and feel is quite premium. Now at the back, again, you get to see a USB data connection, which you can connect to your source device, as well as a pair of RCA outs you can use to connect into an external amplifier or a set of active speakers. And you also get to see a DC 5 volt adapter. What that means is in case you're running off sources like a smartphone or an iPad, which doesn't have enough power to power the DAC itself, you can add a 5 volt DC adapter and that should help. At the front, you have a dedicated LED indicator, which is going to show you the sample rate of which high-res file you're playing. You have a power match button, which we've discussed on the iFi Uno, and you have a proper analog volume control, which is pretty good, again, to find at this price point. Besides that, you have a full-sized headphone jack, which is a 6.3 mm, and then you have iFi Audio's x Base Plus. What this does is when engaged, it's gonna give you a 10 dB boost in the bass frequency, especially around that 20 Hertz. And it sounds quite nice and exciting. It's not really making your mids and trebles muddy. Uh, so it gives you a bit of that excitement. And I think it works with headphones that maybe sound a bit sterile out of the box. Case in point, I was using the DT770 Pros and it sounded pretty good. But when I engaged the x Space Plus, it just took the headphones to a whole nother level and I enjoyed it for music listening in general. So I tried out the M50X and the 770 80 ohms and they sounded great. They had more than enough power and I was quite comfortable using it. The iFi Audio Zen Air DAC is pretty clean, but it's not too sterile. So uh, it sounds great in general. And you have that x Space function, which gives you a little bit of a kick if you're into that. All right, so finally we have the award-winning Zendac V2. Now, this thing is really well put together. It has a nice metal build. Everything you touch and feel feels nice and sturdy. And uh, yeah, just feels great. So you have the iFi audio motif right here on top. And at the back, you might be familiar with most of the ports now. You have a USB-B 3.0. What this allows for is faster reading and writing speeds. That five volt adapter, which we have seen, the DC input a pair of RCA outputs, along with a 4.4 balanced analog output. That's pretty nice. You have a switch over here, which you can toggle. What this allows you to do is, in case you're using this with an external amplifier, you can keep this in the fixed position, and that's gonna allow the Zendac V2 to just act like a DAC and not have any amplification done. It's pretty nice. At the front, you have, again, things that we already discussed. You have power match, you have true bass, which is gonna give a little bit of kick in the bass, and you have a proper analog volume knob, along with two headphone outputs. So you have a full size 6.3 mm headphone jack, along with the 4.4 Pentagon balanced output. So those of you who wanna try out your balance cables with this DAC, you can do that. Now, coming to the actual sound quality of this, I felt it's slightly on the warmer side, but still very crisp, very clear. It's using iFi's Per Brown DAC chip. In terms of power output, it has plenty, around 330 milliwatts, 
pretty much good to go with planar headphones in this segment. So I tried it out with the Edition XS, the Haifa and Sundaras, and it did it did it did a lot basically. So I just had the volume knob around two two or three o'clock, and that was quite a lot for me. It brought about the dynamics just perfect, and I never felt that I was lacking for any sort of volume. Uh, in case you want to go a bit higher, probably like have the headphones like Hi-Fi Man, Aria, or probably running 250 ohm headphones, you get the iFi Audio Zen Can, which you can pair along with the Zen DAC for a fully balanced setup, and that should give you more than enough power. All right, so coming to the all important question, which iFi DAC is right for you? For most beginners out there, I feel the iFi Audio Uno is perfect. It's well built and sounds great. So I ran it with the Grados and it sounded really nice. And I think anything in that caliber perfectly suits the iFi Uno and it's priced really nice. Anything a little bit more power hungry and then you might be looking at the Zen Air DAC. Again, a little bit more desktop sized. So you have that power output and the X-Space feature, which you get to see on more premium iFi audio equipment. And then if you really want to get into serious headphone listening, we're talking about dynamic drivers, planars, and trying out balanced cables, then the iFi Audio Zen DAC still remains the reigning champ in this segment. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you found this helpful. If you want to try any of these products, you can drop in here in our experience studio in Mumbai. If you're not from Mumbai, you can catch us at one of our Headphone Connect events happening to a city close to you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.